Hello everybody, you're watching the Photoshop Workbench and I'm Mark Johnson. Textures applied to a photograph create the illusion that a two-dimensional scene has tactile, three-dimensional properties. Textures also have the ability to make an image appear as if it was crafted by hand rather than as pixels. In today's Workbench we'll employ a pair of textures from the Flypaper Textures Collection. These are some of the finest textures available anywhere. If you decide to make a purchase after viewing them, be sure to enter the code, this is all uppercase, Mark S J. so M-A-R-K-S-J, during checkout to receive 15% off your order. We'll use one of the textures as an image overlay, and we'll apply the other directly to a layer mask in order to add a unique creative border. If you don't own the flypaper textures, consider using textures that you capture with your own camera or visit a free texture site such as cgtextures.com. I want to start here by showing you a few examples of images from my botanical dreaming book that I have recrafted using flypaper textures. Um, here is the first example. And let me pop in a few others here to let you take a peek at those. You can see how beautiful both the texture is and the border here. Um, I used a couple of different flypaper collections in order to accomplish this and I will uh, point you to those in a moment in case you have interest. They truly are some of the uh, most beautiful high-res textures that I have encountered so I'm quite excited about them. Here's the next example, and then I'll show you one more here. These images are all from my Botanical Dreaming book, but they don't appear quite like this in the book. Um, in, this, in these examples, I have added textures and unique borders uh, using the flypaper textures. And keep in mind, if, if you don't own or you don't want to own flypaper textures, you can do this using textures that you capture with your own camera or um, that you find in other places as well. So <laughs> don't feel obligated <laughs> to own these textures. Um, let me actually take you for just a moment here. Um, I, I bought the entire collection. It's, uh, I think, right now, as of this workbench, there are one, two, three, four, five different collections. The Fly Edges collection is the one that I use to create the unique. Um, the unique edges and in fact I'll show you uh, we'll work with this specific one coming up. Um, there are also other collections this is Flypaper Text Box 2 and we're going to be using Basalt and you can see there are a lot of other spectacular looking textures in here. Got, this is um, Spring Painterly this collection right here and I'm not showing you everything by the way I'm just showing you a few quick examples. Here we have Summer Painterly the palettes are stunning and then this one is text box one so anyway these are some of the textures that you may want to consider using we'll use a couple of these in our workbench today so we are going to work on this image that you see right here uh, direct from my botanical dreaming book and which by the way is available on my website um, and I think I have an excerpt on there in case you're interested in checking it out now if we are going to accomplish um, the unique border effect here's what we need to do we'll begin by duplicating the background that's a command or control J to duplicate the background and we want to take the original background activate it and fill it with white so to fill with this background color right here, the keyboard shortcut is Command Delete on the Mac or Control Backspace on the PC. If you're not into shortcuts, you can choose Edit Fill and use white as the fill color. All right, so we have our white background. We'll be uh, viewing parts of that background through this layer one in a moment. In order to add this unique uh, border to the image we're going to work with a layer mask so I am going to add a layer mask to layer one by clicking right here the add layer mask icon so here is my mask and I'm actually going to be pasting a texture um, a border texture into this mask which means I want to activate this mask to do so you hold down option on the Mac or Alt on the PC and click the mask itself. 
So now I'm actually viewing the contents of the mask. Now I'm going to go find this specific fly edges number 16 um, edge that I'm interested in. And you can't see it all there. Let me shrink it down. There we go. All right. And I'm going to choose Select All, Edit Copy. Can move that one aside. Now I'll come back to this, and remember I'm working in the mask here, so I'm going to be hiding parts of this layer when I paste in in a moment. So I'll choose Edit Paste. All right. Now before you deselect, I've made the mistake of deselecting before, and that actually cuts off part of your image if it's larger than the image that you just pasted into. So don't deselect like I've done in the past. Um, shrink this down, and I'm using spacebar and option on the Mac, and then clicking or spacebar and alt on the PC and then clicking. There you go, now I can see everything. Um, by the way, command zero or control zero if you're on a PC will show you your edges once or your um, your bounding box once you go into transform scale mode. But um, I'm not doing that here because of something going on with my workbench. So I'm actually shrinking it down first. You don't need to do that. Um, Command zero or control zero after you've gone into transform mode will automatically show you the uh, the handles that you need. So now I'm going to choose edit and transform scale, and I will grab this handle, drag it in like this, and I'll grab this handle and drag it in like this. And how you scale these, it's entirely up to you. I'll tab return or enter and then select deselect. All right. I missed a little something there, so I'm just going to really quickly scale that out. And by the way, it keeps snapping right now because I have snap switched on. If you're in the middle of scaling and the snap is bothering you, hold down the control key. That's control on Mac or PC. So it's not command on Mac, it's control. And that will allow you to make it not snap. <laughs> I'll press return or enter. All right, now this is my mask, okay? Keep in mind that this this uh, beautiful um, edge, this beautiful border is now my mask. So if I option or alt click here on the mask itself, look what I have. Pretty cool. So where you see black on this mask, you are completely hiding the picture and revealing the white background below. Where you see white, and we don't have any pure white here, I guess this is the closest, that means you're seeing all of the picture. And where you see gray, you're seeing a little bit of it. So um, I like the way that looks, but I actually want more, more contrast in it, more contrast in the mask so that this border stands out better. So I'm going to run levels on the mask. So with the mask itself activated, choose Image Adjustments Levels. All right, and in the Levels dialog box, move around some of the sliders. I'm starting off with this Input Levels Highlight slider. I'm going to move into right about here. And I'm keeping my eyes not so much, I am interested in the density of the picture itself, but I'm equally interested in the density of the border and the texture that I've applied here. And now I'll move the mid-tone slider. That allows that texture to really encroach into the picture a little bit more. Play around just a bit more here. As you can see, you can really get this looking exactly the way you want it to look. Just a little experimentation using these three sliders. Click OK. Let me show you the mask a moment ago and now. OK. And so that is cutting the hole for this picture. Now we want to come in here, and I'm zooming past 100%, but there's very little texture in these areas, and I actually would like to have some texture in these areas that are looking kind of flat. And so I'm going to use another texture. Um, I believe it's one from the Flypaper Text Box 2 collection. It's called Basalt. Yeah, I'm going to be using this one right here. So I'll grab that texture. I'll do a Select All and an Edit Copy. Get that out of the way. Come over here and do an Edit Paste. All right. Now, one thing I want to mention here is I'm working on low-res files. These textures actually come, I think, at 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, so they're nice high-res textures. 
Uh, right now I'm working with something much more low res so that you can uh, so that we can a work fast and also so that we're uh, we can fit within this workbench space that I, I have here. Now again, um, if you want to edit transform scale right now, you could then press Command or Control Zero in order to see the handles. I'm actually going to do a little shrinking here first, uh, and then edit transform scale. Okay, and I will bring this in. And by the way, you don't have to do this. You don't have to scale these. You're going to get different looks if you don't scale them. Uh, but I want to utilize all the beauty of that texture right there. So I'll tap Return or Enter to commit the transformation. And now I'm going to blend this texture in with the photo below by cycling through the blend modes up here. As long as I have the Move tool active, I can simply press Shift Plus. And every time I tap Plus, I get a different blend with this texture and what's below. If you're on a PC, if you uh, activate this pull down menu here, you can use the scroll wheel or the up and down arrows to get through it as well, but that only works on a PC. Shift plus will work on a Mac or a PC. All right, so let's go with that. Normally I would explore all of these just to see what they each do. This is subtle. But you'll notice as I zoom up here, it's adding texture into those areas where I want that texture. All right. You can also play around with the opacity for this layer if you feel that you want to reduce its density um, in this scene. Now, it has added some overall darkness to this image. I'm going to correct that with curves in a moment. But first, something that's important to know is if you add a texture, and this really is a poor example, but if you add a texture that has color like this, then that color may corrupt your image below. If you don't want that color to corrupt the image on the layer below, then what you can do is you can clip a black and white adjustment layer into this texture layer. Let me show you how that's done. I'm going to go into the Adjustments panel, which is available under the Window menu like all panels. And I'm going to hold down Option or Alt when I click here on Create a New Black or Black and White Adjustment Layer. By holding Option or Alt, I get this new layer dialog, and I can check this box, Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask. That will clip the black and white adjustment into the texture, draining it of color, but not affecting the underlying image. Now press OK, and you didn't see much change here because that texture had almost no color. You can also cycle through these presets to see how they affect the overall look of the scene. And again, not seeing much impact here, just because that black and white clipped adjustment layer isn't really draining much color from this image that, uh, or this texture that has virtually no color. But still, that's a very handy trick right there. Now the other thing I want to do is bring back some light to this, and I'll do that using a curves adjustment layer. So I'll click on the adjustments panel, click this arrow right here to return to the adjustment list, click on this icon to add a curves adjustment. Now what I want to do is I'll take these three-quarter tones, or these highlights with detail, and I'll brighten them by dragging up here. And I like this to look pretty bright. So I go to there. Now it's a little flat, so I'll come down here to the uh, quarter tones, or the shadows with detail, and maybe just play around with that. And I actually kind of like this looking a little bit flat. It's, it's an image that actually lends itself to that. I'll just play around with this just a little bit more. I think that's looking good. All right, now back into the Layers panel. Here's my Curves Adjustment. I like it um, almost everywhere, but I feel like it's getting a little too bright right up in here and maybe down in here. So with the mask activated, I'll choose the Brush tool. Black is my foreground color. I'll set the opacity here to about 50% by tapping 5 make the brush bigger using the right bracket key. Let me just shrink this down a little. And I'll paint to hide, and I'm at 50%, so I'm not fully hiding, but I'm hiding the impact or the effect of that adjustment in these areas because they've just seemed a little bit too bright. So here's the mask. 
And so the adjustment is having full impact down in here. It's having partial impact here and here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I feel pretty satisfied. Keep in mind, you can always go back. Since these are adjustment layers, you can go back and you can modify the values. You can paint on the mask to hide them from specific areas. Um, you can come back to this texture and play around with the blend mode or the opacity. You can come back to this texture that's been applied to a mask and run levels on it to affect the way it interacts with the image um, or the way it hides parts of this image to reveal the white layer below. So really you have a lot of freedom at this point to get as creative in this process as you want to be. And I think textures are just a tremendous way to add character and depth to your images. So give this a shot. See how it goes for you. I have a feeling you're going to love it. Anyway, thank you so much for being with me. Oh, before I do this, let's go real quickly. Here's... Whoa! <laughs> I, was gonna, I was going to show you before and after, uh, but things went tragically wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, let's do it this way. How about we go back to the old-fashioned way? Here's before. And here is after. <laughs> I took the circuitous route there. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being with me on the Photoshop workbench. Have a wonderful day. Take care.